Hola besties, it's Kay here and today we're going to talk about my new absolute favorite in the cozy gaming genre. So as you know, in February there was a massive, massive sale in the Nintendo community. A lot of games were reduced in price and let me tell you, I think in my wish list about 70% was reduced and I was about to buy everything and rubbing my hands together thinking how I will be testing all of these lovely games and this was exactly the moment when the studio Drydog has texted me and told me like hey we have a very cool beginner friendly game do you want to try it and I was like let me think no 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 let me not think this game has a girl like with colored hair like like kind of this kind of color who is a witch who has a cat and which has farming elements yes duh of course and so i started my way with wildflowers and yeah let me tell you i got so consumed that the sale went like like this i didn't even notice this i forgot that i wanted to buy something i forgot about the games that i bookmarked and i just started playing this game every single day and you know what it is amazing and let me tell you why first of all let me tell you they did not lie to me when they said it was beginner friendly and i loved it because there is nothing more frustrating than playing a game, relaxing, having your way with it, getting consumed by the story and then being stuck because you don't know how to find a fish or a stone or whatever. This happened to me with Animal Crossing, for example, where I had to Google why I suddenly don't have any stones or how to stop breaking stones and just get like materials from it. This has never happened to wildflowers. Never. And this is just amazing. This gave me a chance to learn everything myself and everything was very self-explanatory. It was very entry-level friendly. And right now, from now on, I can tell you if you like farming and you like like simulators or sim games, this is the perfect, perfect way to start gaming. Let me tell you a little bit about the plotline of this game. So the main character is the girl Tara, who is moving into her grandma house her grandmother is unfortunately not feeling so well and um, she's sick so Tara has to keep an eye on the farm um, and help her out with her tasks and um, this is how the story progresses I'm not gonna spoil her anything but at some point Tara discovers that her grandmother and she also is a witch and that's where witchcraft flies into this game and makes it even better one thing I usually mention is the color scheme and it is amazing in this game I, I sound like I like everything about this game and it is not a lie it is almost true there are just a couple of points that I found could be improved um, but I indeed liked everything about this game this is my next favorite this is my new favorite and I the, the only game that I play nowadays so this means something Anyway, the color scheme, it is so beautiful. And the best thing, it progresses with the day. You start the day from a little bit colder colors everywhere. Like, you know, this morning where everything is, the air is a bit fresh. And when you just know that you're about to start an amazing day, that's exactly the colors. During the day, it gets warmer. Sometimes it rains. And in the end, it's the sunset colors. It's a little bit pinkish, a little bit orange, very warm and it's just a pleasure to be looking at this. Me, as an illustrator myself, I was just fascinated how, how they did it, how they really took time and how they really tried to make a good impression of a reality, of a magical reality. I cannot find the proper words to describe how I loved the colors in this game. Another great thing is that the plotline is developing. It never stops developing. And this is, for example, something that I didn't like in Animal Crossing because at some point the plotline just stopped 
and then you're on your own and you're like okay so what do, what do i do now um, and for some people it's great because they want to play alone and they don't want to be doing something they are told to they want to have their own way or they want for example to decorate mostly and then it is perfect i'm not one of those people and if you are like me as well here then you will love it the plot line just keeps going and it's like watching I don't know an anime or a movie or a cartoon and the great thing is that it is not like every day is the same but the plot line is very developing and very fast in the beginning then it slows down a bit but it still keeps kicking you new things every now and then the characters in this game are alive and they are not just walking weirdos that speak in weird language and this is a phenomenon in many games especially in indie games where you have like strange noises instead of voices but like even in sims in sims we have simlish but in this case they have a voiceover which is made incredibly good it is like watching a movie the voice actors did such a great job here and what is most important is the characters are alive you really get a touch to them you start liking them or maybe disliking some of them i have a couple of villagers that i really dislike and it's not because how they look but i don't know there is something shady about them and there are some that i really like and like at some point if you lose someone or stop being friends you really feel it you feel it like in real life and this is something i haven't seen in any game and this is something I, I think I only experienced in Sims. And even in Sims, you are the one to decide what the relationship between two persons will be. In this case, no. It is so such a real life experience, but in kind of a fairy tale way that I really cannot describe how I loved it. One of the things I always mention on my channel is the sounds and the soundtrack. And here, Ace. They aced it. It's amazing. It is so cozy as possible. The chirping of the birds, the cat. First of all, you have a cat. You have a cat there. And um, yeah, well, when I started playing this game, I was just taking care of the cat and coming back to the cat and playing with the cat and greeting the cat and feeding the cat and cat, 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 cat. I spent, I think, around half of my playtime with a cat. And you get this very nice music, like the background music that relaxes you even more. It changes from location to location. There are also some locations that don't have music, which is also important because personally I get tired of the like annoying background music sometimes very quickly and it really needs the balance and which has been achieved here in this game. It sounds like I like everything about this game and it's almost true. I think the, like a couple of things could be improved and I will be coming to them at the end of the video, but mostly it is my new favorite cozy game. So yeah, I liked almost everything. You have the sound of the wind, you have the sound of the animals, you have the sound of the sea, you have the amazing voiceover of the actors and everything, all of this detail just results in an amazing gaming experience. And speaking about the sounds and the weather in general, in this game it changes, it has seasons and not only, the weather is playable. For example, when it's raining, you don't have to water your plants. And this is something that has been missing for me in many games, such as Animal Crossing, for example. If it was snowing, I still for some reason had to water my plants. And the plants were not really, like, they. some of them are seasonable, but like not to the real degree. And in this game, you really, really have, and I, and I keep saying this over and over again that you get such a real life experience with a very nice magic dust over it that it's incredibly nice. Not only you can work and do things in your main town on your main map but you also have a couple of great locations that you discover while you're progressing in the game. One of such locations is the mines and I love going there because 
it's a completely different world. Everything is very dark and earthy and you get the eco and you really have a feeling you are in the mines. I keep thinking about um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and this one episode where they went to the mines. This is exactly how I feel. It's a little bit creepy. You always have a feeling like what if something happens there? But don't worry, it's safe. There, <laughs> there is nothing in the game that can scare you. So you just have a feeling that you discover more and more and more in the game. Interaction in Wildflowers is rewarded. If you speak to people, they can give you a new task and then give you money for this task or food. Who doesn't like free food? And this is something I also was missing in many um, other games. Like, of course, in Animal Crossing, you get rewarded by miles, but this is just not the same. At some point, you don't need them anymore. So you don't need to talk to people just like in real life uh, but yes in wildflowers you get rewarded and you get rewarded by tasks and the plot is again progressing because if you are friends with people the communication changes and you start having new options with them kind of like in sims but more interactive and i love it another thing that is very special about this game is that you choose how to progress in the game um, you get different tasks from different people and you can choose from whom you will take the task. For example, there were two people who wanted paper from me and I wanted to or I had to choose whom I want to help because I found one of the characters very shady and I was like, okay, he, he's up to something and I don't know what but I don't like him, so I gave the paper to the other person and this drives my plot somewhere else. So you really have a million options how the game can develop and you are the one to decide how this will be. Isn't it great? Quests! And this is my favorite thing to discuss with every game because I'm very picky what comes, when it comes to quests and in this game it's very smart because you can pick additional quests yourself. You have like the board in the center of the city where citizens post things they need. And if you feel like doing this quest, you can do this. If you feel like doing this task, if you feel like giving someone potatoes and you have too many, then you can do this. If you don't, you just don't. And when you get a task that you need to do, there is no time pressure on doing this. Like, it just keeps hanging there. It's not too much, it's not too little, and it's just the perfect golden middle. Another thing that I have not seen in any cozy games, I mean, I haven't played so many, but I haven't yet seen, is that you pick your orientation in the game, like sexual orientation, and you pick people who you want to date. And I think this is very important and it needs to be recognized in games in general, because Different people have different tastes and it is very sad when you don't have different options. So this is something I really loved and that's something I'm really grateful for because this is life. In life things are different. We are all different and we need to accept this. So here is a joint thumbs up for the relationship like scene or relationship model that the creators have made for the players and you can really see how they care about this. This game is a perfect cozy escape for anyone who just wants to forget their reality and this is exactly what I use it for. I come there, I don't turn it on, I plug the headphones or I just play from, from my TV and I am in there. I don't notice the time, I don't think about anything and this is just something I have been looking for the whole journey in the Nintendo um, and in the in cozy games in general. Now let's talk about things that I think could be improved. It's not a problem that they are like this, but personally me, this is my personal preference, what I would have loved to see changed or at least would love to have. The first one is the main one, I think. I wish that the map had a legend saying where is which shop and when it is opened or closed because I lose so much time by running back and forth and seeing oh this shop is closed today and I had a task there today and I needed to do this today and this cost me a lot of time and a lot of energy from my from my character so it would have been great 
to see when everything is closed and when it opens um, just for their like smoother experience I would say it's not a problem I still can run there but not knowing where the bakery is in the beginning for example is a bit tricky because you have to run over all, all of the shops and think like oh my gosh is it this one is it this street is it this street and with the legend it would have been much easier another point is i wish my character would run faster there is no button and you know that in many games there is a some kind of button that you can press so that your character runs faster no, non-existent here, but this could be solved by magic. So you can um, make a spell that will allow you run fast for three days, but you always have to make the new spell. And sometimes you don't have enough elements or what's on, what not, you don't have enough time. And this is a bit tricky. I wish she would be able to run, but it looks like she's just like me unsporty and bad at running. Again, my personal preference, it was a bit hard for me in the beginning to remember who is who, um, but it creates a perfect impression of a new girl in town, which is the, the plot line here. So it's kind of a pro and con at the same time, because while it was a bit hard and I was like, okay, I have a task with, with Mark, who is Mark? <laughs> Um, but at the same time, it gives you a real-time experience of, of a newbie, of not knowing anyone in the town. So it's, it's tricky, but maybe I wish there were not so many villagers now that, that it would have been very boring. But anyway, that's something that, that I remembered from my experience in the first days. The last one is the characters are alive, there, which I mentioned. And they are so alive that they can break your heart and this is the one with the grandmother like just be prepared that if you're sensible like me and i'm very empathic that when this happens you're sad i was sad but this is also good because the whole town was sad and you really had the impression it everyone cared because it's a small town everyone knows everyone so this is again in pro and con as you can see there are not so many negative parts about the game. I really loved this gaming experience and I will keep playing it for sure. You can be sure of that. And the great part is the developers are working on the game all the time. They add new and new and new stuff in there. And it is just incredible. The price of the game right now in the market is 20 euros and 99 cents. So 21 roughly. And I think it would be equivalent to 21 pounds and 21 dollars and so on and so far um, or around this. And to be honest, I think this game could cost much, much more because it's so good. Um, when I got it, I was like, okay, let's see what it can be because I got Animal Crossing, for example, for 60 with additions and add-ons and stuff. And here you get everything for 21 and i think it is an amazing price i think the game is worth more but it is just great that we have more for less and as mentioned developers keep adding new stuff again for free like they added seasons they added relationships they added clothes and shops and it's just great to see that they really care about their community for them, their community is this small town, so they really take it seriously. If you're a beginner, or even not, but you're looking for something new in the cozy community, Wildflowers is definitely, definitely something that you need to try. So make sure to check it out, and I will see you in my next videos. Bye, babes!